That's my job. On this expedition to try and find any evidence, dead or alive, to the existence of this. Now we're recording. Hi, Taryn. Hi, Heather. How are you? Not eating this time. <laughs> How are you? Great. Oh, guys, I'm so sorry about last episode. Taryn was eating a bag of fruit, and to me, it didn't sound very loud. But then while I was editing it, I could definitely hear that bag noise, and I, I mean, I'm sorry about it, but I didn't bring the bag, so. I was hungry. I'm sorry. You know, when you need to eat some fruit, you just need to eat some fruit. So, I apologize. I am not a loud eater. I was being quiet, but apparently the microphone liked the sound of the bag. Sure did. It was good fruit, though. Taryn, do you want to tell everybody why you were eating fruit? All right, that's fine. She really likes fruit, though. (laughs) <laughs> let's just say you'll find out in august yay that's a pretty big hint i know <laughs> if they can't figure it out then i don't know what to say <laughs> oh that's all right oh okay so again sorry for the last episode i was really really sick this week started on thursday when i was editing it just so i could make sure it was ready for friday heard the bag noises and i'm like i could fix this but i'm not gonna <laughs> so you know, with that. Also, you know what I noticed? What? I say the word so a lot. But you stopped with the ums. Did I? Yes. But every, I feel like every single ep, like sentence I start, I go, so. Normally, that's when we get distracted or off on a, a tangent about something. That's true. Your way of bringing us back is the so. So. But you quit with the ums. That's good. I, I have noticed I do say um sometimes. I try not to, but the show is going to take me a lot to get rid of. And last episode, I got rid of a lot of them. That's good. And, but they were really funny because I said them in so many different inflections. Did you keep them so we could put the shows no, together? No, I didn't. It would be so, hilarious. So, so, so. You know what? Tyler told me to do that, too. <laughs> but I did not keep them. <laughs> See, you should. <laughs> I'm sure there's going to be some more shows, so we should totally keep it. Oh, fine. Okay, I'll try to keep some of the shows. So... So, (laughs) I also say the word fantastic quite a lot. I did notice that one. I do, but, and I find it funny because whenever I say fantastic, it sounds really sarcastic. Sometimes they are. (laughs) But no, most of, because our our first episode that we released when we were just, you know, doing the intro with us, Mm -hmm. I said, our library is fantastic. And it sounded super, super, like, very dripping sarcastic. When I wasn't being sarcastic, it really is fantastic. (laughs) Can you say that five times fast? What, fantastic or sarcastic? (laughs) The whole sentence together. (laughs) No, I can't. (laughs) Fantastic, 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 fantastic. No, you just... Fantastic, sarcastic? Yeah, all together with the so. No. (laughs) I don't want it to... (laughs) So fantastic, sarcastic. <laughs> this is fa- all right. This is great. We. I'm sorry about our random tangents. No, man, we have, we haven't even begun the tangent. <laughs> I'm sure it's coming. Can you still hear it in my voice that I'm a little sick? It's a little off. Not bad. I feel like I'm a little deeper than normal. It's a little scratchy too. So is deeper it? and scratchy. Do I sound like a man? Not yet. Give it a week. No, I'll be better by then. <laughs> I would hope so. I, I'm, I'm already better. It's just the apparently my voice sounds a little off. It's okay. It's fine. They still knows you. Yeah. So. So. <laughs> now we're just going to do it. <laughs> just start a drinking game. Every time I say so, take a drink. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> okay. Today's topic. Do you know what reincarnation is? 
I believe reincarnation is when you pass your, if your soul has not completed its task or is ready to pass on, then you are reconnect, you are reborn as the same person. That's why you have young souls and old souls. That's why you can have a five-year-old that seems wise beyond their time and a 50-year-old that just seems like a two-year-old. <laughs> old souls. Have, yeah, old souls and soul. young souls. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Do you know anybody who has claimed to have a past life that they remember? No, but I have heard that your like your birthmarks on your body mm -hmm. are wounds from where you died in your past life. I've heard of that too. Do you have any? I do. I have an oval shape on my stomach. <gasps> Looks like a knife wound. Someone stabbed you in the gut. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> my husband has a two little, it looks like a snake bite. Oh, yeah. On his arm, which is his birthmark. Oh. And then my son has two little freckles, one on his stomach and one on his back, like a really... It's, it's like weird. an arrow? No, it's smaller than an arrow would be. I guess it could have been an arrow, but it's weird because one's on his back, like in between his shoulder blades, and then the other one's down near his stomach. Oh. Oh. Sniper. I don't know. Could be. Maybe. Through and through. My brother has one. It's a birthmark in his Man, hair. you know lots of people with birthmarks. Yeah. My brother <laughs> has a birthmark right here. Um, I say right here, and I know you guys can't see it, but take your right ear, go left in an inch, and then up into your hair an inch, and that's where his birthmark is. Oh. So when you shave his head, you can see it. Someone hit him on the back of the head? Or some past that. life? I don't know. Oh. If it's true. Mm. But do you I have any birthmarks? I don't. I'm a, I'm a young soul. Apparently. Yeah, I have zero birthmarks. I've got scars, but that doesn't count. It doesn't count. count. That's from this life. No, I have no birthmarks at all. Um, my son has a birthmark on the back of his head, but it's a really large one. Mm -hmm. Like, it covers his, basically from his hairline up until, like, at the half of his skull. Hmm. So it's really large. And Ashlyn had, had, you can barely see it now, but you could see it when she was a baby. It was right on her forehead. Okay. You can still see it if you really try. I'm going to go up to your daughter, grab her face, and like, hold it still. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's really faded, but it was like right, yeah, right on the forehead. But I don't have any. And as far as I know, my Tyler doesn't have any. See, I could see Tyler not like being a young soul with how goofy he is goofy. He is. <laughs> he is goofy. And, you know, with what I do for a living, I can, I see a lot of young souls. Mm -hmm. And I see a lot of people that are wise beyond their years. Yeah. And I find it rather fascinating. I don't know if I necessarily believe in reincarnation, mm -hmm. but it's definitely fun to think about, especially when you have that five, like that 10 year old that is just like, why are you acting like a 50? You should be doing stupid stuff, but you are acting so mature for your age. Yeah. And then you take someone who's 50. For example, my uncle, who's 60 now. Hmm. He moved out of my grandma's house last year. He's been living off my grandma for 60 some odd years. That's sad. Very sad. Nobody That's... in the family likes him. <laughs> my grandma finally moved why. in with my mom. Bye bye, uncle. <laughs> That's great. All right. Well, I'm going to tell you some stories that might make you believe in reincarnation. We'll see. All right. I've got a bunch of different stories. We'll see how much time we've got. I'm going to start with Luke Ruhlman. The boy's name is Luke Ruhlman. All right. So he's a young boy from Cincinnati. And kind of going along with what you said, the whole old soul thing, his parents were, you know, their son's rather odd. So around two years old, he was very conscientious about home safety. Hmm. Like, you know, being careful crossing the road. He had two year olds. Who's going to think of that? They just run. They, they could be really good parenting. Dad, at two years old, I don't know. Just saying. My kids didn't know anything about cars, you know, wanting to kill them. Well, they don't, cars don't want to kill, but you know, it happens. Well, his parents were also like, you know, it's weird because not, not just with the cars thing, but he was also like very careful about whether drinks were too hot, too cold, 
just you know he took something things, a five year old would be doing. Yeah, he but he was two and he was just ta- he took things very seriously. So you know, weird kid. Nothing to be overly concerned about. It's kind of nice to have a two year old, you know, being you know careful. Yeah, because I never had that. I wish I did. <laughs> I don't really have that. <laughs> no, no, I definitely don't. So as the little as the boy grew a little bit older, he kept mentioning a uh, uh, the name Pam. It was it was he would make weird comments saying I used to have hair like that or I used to have earrings like that, you know, think, you know, just weird things. Hmm. Well, one day Luke's parents sat him down and asked where he got all these weird ideas ideas from. You know, who's Pam? Who in the world is Pam? The boy answers, "Well, I was Pam." And they were like, well, what do you mean that you were Pam? He goes, well, I used to be, but I died, went up to heaven, saw God, and eventually God pushed me back down. When I woke up, I was a baby, and you named me Luke. Hmm. So It's weird that he would even remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Most, most of the time when I've heard of reincarnation, people don't remember it. You just have people who are wise beyond their years. Okay, well, all of these stories are going to be actual remembering of their past lives. Hmm. And in almost every one of these cases, they are young children. Interesting. So they were very shocked, first of all, because they didn't raise their son religiously. Like, they didn't teach him about God and heaven and all that. So for him to just come up with the whole, I was in heaven and God pushed me down is weird. That is a little weird. Yeah. Um, really cool. And it kind of proves the fact that God is there without actually seeing him. Yeah, kind of. That's no, one of them, at least in this story. Um, well, they sat him down and asked, well, how did you die? And the boy said, I died in a fire. I used to live in Chicago. Did he die during that great Chicago fire? No. Uh-huh. Wouldn't have that have been cool, though? That would have been cool. No. Wasn't that. Um... So the mother really wanted to know more about Pam, asked him some more questions, and the boy told his mom that he was a black woman named Pam. Well, to verify what her son told her, she Googled fires in Chicago. Obviously, the first one to pop up was probably the Great Chicago Fire. I would assume so. It's the most famous one. (laughs) It is. Well, that's not one she came across. She came across one... Uh, it was a fire at a um, hotel called the Paxton. And that happened in 1993. Okay. Uh, she came across the names of victims who died in that fire. One was a 34-year-old black woman named Pam Robinson. Hmm. That's just creepy. Oh, it gets creepier. Like, I just got the goosebumps. It gets creepier. Okay. So parents wanted to test the boy after, you know, getting a picture of Pam. And they, they you know, they got a picture of Pam. And then they got a bunch of pictures of other random black Woman. women. Yeah. And gave him this whole stack of pictures for him to go through. And they're like, you know. Who's Pam? Yeah. Yeah. Who's Pam? Immediately picked out the right photo of Pam Robinson and said, this was me. Sorry. Well, here's the thing. It's like, okay, so you, you made it 34 before you passed, right? Mm-hmm. You'd think that you would learn from your mistakes as your past 34-year-old. So the stupid stuff that you did as a kid, the stupid stuff you did as a teenager, you wouldn't do in this life because mm-hmm. you remembered it. That'd be kind of cool. That would be kind of cool. I don't know. So that was, that was your, your teaser. That was your starter story. Maybe that explains why you have some people who, like, as soon as they hit 21, they feel like they have to drink to get it out of the system. And then you have the other people that, like, never want to drink because they don't feel like they need to. Yeah. Because they've done it in the past. Oh, they did all their drinking in the past. You know? Yeah. All right. My second story. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> it was about a boy named Ryan Hammonds. His story started when he was about four years old. Okay. So around four years old, he started having really vivid nightmares. And, and he would wake up in the middle of night, night screaming and saying things like his heart felt like it was exploding. That's never good. No, like 
this poor little, he was so cute when he was a little four-year-old. His parents weren't really, they didn't know what was going on. They were frightened for their little four-year-old son, didn't really know what to do. But then he started saying weird things. Like... Red Brown. No, that's too weird. <laughs> that's, I need an exorcist over here right now. <laughs> Too weird. <laughs> I, you know, figured I'd just go with it. You know, what was he saying? <laughs> well, he was more like he was playing in his room, and you know, kids are playing in your in their rooms. I, one of my kids are playing in the rooms. Every once in a while, I'll walk up there and just watch him play. Well, you know, she would do that. It, his mom was named Cindy. Um, she, Cindy would go up there to the room, watch her son play, and he would act like he was directing. And he said that he was making pictures. Now, when you say directing, like, was he directing an orchestra? Or was no, he like... Directing traffic? Like, what was he directing? You, you know, I say directing pictures. What do you think? What directing pictures would be? A movie? Yeah. Kind of like directing a... Yeah, a okay. movie. The moving pictures. Yeah, he was acting like he was a director of a movie. Okay. So that's what he was doing. Kind of weird. But, you know, kids will be kids, I guess. Yeah, but they only mimic stuff they've already seen. Yeah. I don't know what kind of kid would see a director direct movies. Unless you had a dad who directed movies. He didn't. So. All right. Well, Ryan eventually told his mother that he wanted to go home. He's like, well, what do you mean? You are home. He's like, no, I used to be another person. And I and I want to go home. But he just, you know, hmm. couldn't articulate where he wanted to go just yet. So he began describing details of being on a Hollywood movie set in the 1940s. Should explain the picture thing. Yes, directing pictures. They were motion pictures. Ah. All right, he began speaking about different memories he had, and he would use different names of famous actors from the 1940s. Hmm. And he said that he met a woman named Rita Hayworth, whom was a very, very big actress in the 1940s. And he said that she loved performing on Broadway and she liked drinking Coke floats, which is very specific and a weird thing for a four, five, four to five year old kid to know. Yes. My kid doesn't even know what Coke floats are. No, I don't think my kids know what that is either. I mean, I think they're called a root beer float nowadays, but. Well, you can have Coke floats. Yeah, or Sprite. I'm just saying. I like Dr. Pepper floats. <laughs> mixed with something else but no I, I totally get it but I'm just saying it's like my kid doesn't even know what a root beer float is let alone a coke fro coke fro <laughs> oh that's great no yeah I mean my kid's nine and I don't think he knows what that is we can go ask him I we'll ask him after this don't let me forget or if he randomly comes out here which he might you Good never know so he would just keep telling all of these stories how you know he used to be big but now I'm little or that I liked it better when I was big and I could go wherever I want to go you know yeah yeah makes sense typical kid adult yeah but the things that he was saying were just so extensive like what kind of five-year-old kid is going to make something like that up it's weird They got a a doctor to come in and, you know, there's this guy, Dr. Tucker, I don't remember his name. Psychologist? Yeah, he's a psychologist and he actually does a lot of work with the reincarnation cases. He talks to a lot of children who believe they have past lives. (laughs) You know, he, he came in, tried to help him out, asked him a bunch of questions, and the boy gave him 55 different facts of his old life Hmm. well they got a hold of this book um it was this book from the 1940s about movie classics 
and, you know, asked him to go through the book, you know, pictures. And he would point out different people like, oh, I know this guy or, you know, this is so and so. And yes, every time it was correct. And then it got to one page. He, he turned the picture. He goes, oh, I know this guy. His name was George. Uh, his name's George. We did a movie together. Well, yes, the guy in the picture is George Raft. He was also a big 1940s actor. And then he pointed to another man that was in the background and said, that's me. Creepy. There is. Um, yeah. So they had no idea who this guy was, did a little digging, found out the man's name was Marty Martin. Marty Martin. Marty Martin. He played as an extra in one movie. That starred George Raft. Nice. Um, after that move, after he was an extra in the movie, he became a Hollywood agent. But he died five decades before Ryan was even born. That's crazy. Yeah. So they went off and did extensive research on Marty Martin. He found, let's see, he contacted the Marty Martin's uh, daughter. Mm-hmm. To, you know, see how accurate, you know, Ryan's, what he said was true. And it turned out, yes, everything that Ryan told was true. Including that Mr. Marty Martin died of a heart attack. We should explain why the kid was complaining of heart pain. Yes. In his nightmares, it felt like his heart was exploding. Would make sense. So, there was tons of other details that Ryan was very accurately able to tell about Marty Martin's life. Uh, he drove a green Rolls Royce. Was able, yes, he did. How many children he had. Although Ryan did say that Martin had two sisters and Martin's daughter said, no, that's not true. He had one sister. Did he have a sister that passed when she was little? They had, he had a sister that no one ever talked about. She she was kept secret for, well, and many 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 years. So She's schizophrenic. I, it doesn't. Like back they, in the forties, they would hide those types. It's of possible that I didn't get too much details about the guy's sister, just mm-hmm. that he had a sister and no one ever talked about. So it turns out, yeah, Ryan was, you know, yeah, he did have two sisters. Mm-hmm. One other thing, Ryan said that he died when he was sixty one. But on the death certificate of Marty Martin said that he was only 49. Weird. Yeah. So they looked a little bit more into the issue. Turns out that the death certificate was wrong. Which is possible. Yeah. They looked at his birth certificate, did the math. He actually was 61. Hmm. So. Creepiness. Yeah. So this kid... I mean, he he has forgotten things as he's gotten older. Uh, Reading this art at the time of this article, he was 12 years old and he could only remember bits and pieces, but not like everything. And it wasn't it's not as vivid. So he's growing out of it. Well, yeah, that's because his new life is taking over. Yeah. I liked that story. That one was a little creepy. Any remarks on that one? I find it rather interesting. My biggest question, and this is for any who's been reincarnated or has or will be why do they come back what is it that they need to finish before they can rest peacefully um it may not be about resting peacefully there are tons of religions that believe in reincarnation there are very few of them that don't believe in reincarnation yeah but a lot of them that do believe in reincarnation you're here to do something whatever you are put on this earth to create to do right and you are you keep coming back until you've done that whatever that job may be that's not true maybe it's just the one that i did a lot of research on (laughs) hindu the hindu religion they believe in reincarnation but they believe in it i mean this is more of a circle of life everyone gets reincarnated no matter what but they have a caste system you know you know how like we have the poor of the Mm -hmm. 
you know, all that. But and, and they have that. Say you were a really good person. Well, in your next life, you're going to be moved up a cast. But if you were a really bad person in your next life, you're going to move down a cast. That's interesting. So that's just how their religion is. I think in Buddhist religion, I think, is very similar. They believe in reincarnation based on good deeds. But everyone gets reincarnated. It has nothing to do with, I have unfinished business in this life, so in my next life I have to do it. I, I don't know. Every time I think of reincarnation, I think it's because you're right back to finish what you finish something. That's like the same thing as ghosts. Not necessarily. Because a ghost, in my opinion, if you're a ghost, it's because... You haven't been able to let go of your your current your current life, mm-hmm. or you have something that you need to do in this current life that you won't be able to do in a next life, or you died unexpectedly and you don't know what happened, so you're confused. Mm. Where reincarnation is okay, I got killed or I died. I led a good life, but there was something I was supposed to do that I didn't quite do, or maybe I wasn't able to do it in this life this time, so maybe I'll be able to do it next time without knowing what that is. Okay, all right, I can see that. All right, moving onwards. Here's another great story for you. I'm going to tell you a story about the Pollock sisters. Pollock sisters. The Pollock sisters. Married couple who lived in Hexham, England. Their names were John and Florence Pollock. They had two girls, five years apart, named... Jacqueline and Joanna. Well, unfortunately, Jacqueline and Joanna decided they were going to go to church with one of their friends, you know, and meet their parents there. Mm-hmm. Well, on their way, they got hit and killed by a car. Oh. Yeah, that was really sad. What is sad. Well, the next year, in 1958, they gave birth to twin girls. You know, after their other two girls died. Yeah. Which, by the way, the father totally called it. He kept telling his wife that it's okay. We're going to we're gonna get our girls back. We're going to have twins this next time. Lo and behold, there was twins. Hmm. Kind of weird. But they named them Jillian and Jennifer. They were identical twins. Other than they had different birthmarks. Strange thing about birthmarks. One girl had the same exact birthmark on her waist as her deceased sister, Jacqueline. Hmm. Also had a similar birthmark that was on her head that was similar to a scar that Jacqueline had. Creepy. Very creepy. I'm telling you, birthmarks are wounds from lives past. Very, very possible. Yeah, it's not possible. It's true. <laughs> it's just true. We're just going to go for it. Ago. It's fine. The, this family was very Catholic, though. Catholic religion does not believe in reincarnation. Mm-hmm. The evidence that they're finding right now with their two twin girls is it's very possible that their girls that died have been reincarnated as their now twin girls. It was... Interesting. They didn't talk about their other two daughters to their two new daughters. to their two new daughters. They never talked about them. Yet the girls would bring up old toys that they had never seen before, but the other two girls had. Mm-hmm. That's weird. Like, how would you know about this toy? You never had it, but your sisters did. Yeah, but if you had a toy, like let's say they didn't get rid of the toy. Mm-hmm. And the girls found it. Hell, my kid plays with my dog's toys. That's not the kind of thing. So, were you talking about they got rid of the toy and they're talking about wanting that toy? I would assume that's more like it. Okay. Where they didn't even have the toy yet, they still talked about it. Like a past memory. Yeah. Also, they they moved out of Hexham when the girls were like three months old. Okay. Yet, as the girls were growing up, they kept mentioning things about the old town that they wouldn't know anything about because they were never there. Hmm. Well, one time they just they went back to the to Hexham. I'm assuming they had family there, probably. So they went back for a visit. Yeah. And the girls were 
pointing out different things that like, oh, this is where we went to school. This is this place. This is that place. Basically places that their other two girls were very familiar with because that's where they went. But how are these twin girls going to know anything about that when they were never even around it? Yeah, they weren't even around it. Maybe the ghost of the old twins was telling them. Oh, it could have been a ghost thing instead of a reincarnation thing. Except for the birthmarks. (laughs) I'm going to go ahead and pause this. My husband is calling me and I've been waiting for this call. All right, we're back. (laughs) Welcome back. (laughs) Sorry, I was expecting that phone call all day. I didn't get to talk to my husband at all. I know that feeling. That's It's sad, but we love them. He was on a train all day. It's cool. All right. Beep. If you have been noticing that beep in the background, that is something in my garage that I have no idea how to take apart or shut it up. So, sorry. You're just going to hear beeps. It's been doing it for years, guys. (laughs) I don't know how to turn it off. All right. Well, that was the story of the Pollock sisters. What do you think? Interesting. All right. I liked that one, too. That one oh, gave me goosebumps. I've heard that on a couple of other podcasts. Yeah. And I just really like that story. The, the first one really gave me the goosebumps. Yeah? Yeah. About Luke? Yeah. Yeah, that one's pretty cool, too. Tim. All right, I have another one. All right. I've got so many of these. We're just going to keep going until we run out of time. All right. All right, cool. All right, so there's a little boy from the time he was two years old. A little boy named Lee insisted that he had another house and another mommy. Um, Sad. Creepy. I know. That's, you know. My kids say that. It's like, yeah, okay, sure. One thing (laughs) my son does is we'll get home. And he goes, we at mommy and daddy home? We're at our home. And then we'll be inside. He goes, I won't go home. Like, we are home, honey. But that's as far as he goes with it. (laughs) It's right there. No. (laughs) No. I think uh, maybe once Ashlyn said something about wanting to go home and we were like in the living room. I was like, we are home. And she was like, okay. It's basically what, what my right. son does. He cool. Goes, oh, okay, whatever. All right. I'll go home. We are home. Okay. okay. My, there's mommy and daddy home. I won't go home. We are home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, the quietness that I just did was him shrugging his shoulders and rolling his eyes. <laughs> Which I mimicked, but I'm sorry. You can't see my... Random facial expressions or hand signals. Her beautiful facial expressions. <laughs> we'll go with that. <laughs> Thanks for the compliment, Heather. You're welcome. Anyway, this two-year-old that you're talking about. Well, he's three now. We're jumping up a year. Woo! All right. He was, he was saying that he was born on June 26th, which was not right because his birthday was June 21st. Okay. I mean, they're both Only in June. I could see that. You know. He's only three. Yeah, exactly. Well, he also claimed that his middle name was Co. C O E. Co. Hmm. He's like, no, your middle name's not Co. I don't know what his middle name was. It doesn't say. But it wasn't Co. He also said that he wrote movies for a living. Cool. At three years old. What's up with all these movie people being reincarnated? Why can't we have like a scientist that discover something fancy and and continues their work in the new body. Oh, if you want to go with the Hindu stuff, because they did so much good, they have reached enlightenment. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, I don't know. I'm just saying things now. I don't know. Anyways, he also said that he had a daughter named Jennifer. Which, he's three years old. You don't have a daughter. I would hope not. Anyways. Not, we need to do some talking. His sister asked him how old he was when he died, and he replied, 48. Creepy. All right. So Lee's parents were very curious, and they relayed the titles of several different movies to Lee, asking maybe if he'd written them, you know, for fun. And when they mentioned Gone with the Wind, Lee got very excited and said he definitely wrote that one. Hmm. So, after a quick Google search, Lee's parents learned the writer of Gone with the Wind was named Sidney Co. Howard. Huh. Did he die at 48? He was born June 26th. Mm-hmm. Had a daughter named Jennifer. And yes, he died at 48 years old. 
So all the details of Ko's life were unknown to Lee's parents. So uh, obviously they Googled it. They sure didn't know. There was no way their three-year-old son was going to know this stuff. He could probably not even read yet. Yeah. So no one really knows how he knew this. Probably because he was reincarnated. Interesting. He was reborn. Right? So were you reborn, Heather? No, I told you, I have a young soul. I can believe you have a young soul. I am a new soul. I can see that. Yeah. No one's going to have any memories from this life of me. So I die, and whoever I become in another life, no one's going to remember this one. No, but they're going to research podcasts and come across this. Oh, oh, I heard that voice. Oh, my goodness. Hi, future me. Future me. Whatever your name is. Hi. <laughs> if you're listening to this. God, that would be creepy. You think? Uh, yeah. To hear my own voice from another life. Think about what actors think. Like, you have an actor that is reincarnated. Watches oh, one of his movies. That would be creepy. It would be really creepy if they start repeating word for word the lines. Oh. Oh, I couldn't handle that. I'm glad I'm a new soul. Good. So. So, I've got... I've got more that are from other countries, so I apologize profusely. I am not going to know these people's names at all. And if you saw what these people's names are or the names of these towns, I just, I can't, I can try if you really want me to. I kind of want you to. Oh, jeez. Okay. <laughs> you gave me the option. Mm, okay. All right. <clears throat> <clears throat> this person's name is P- Pernima Ekenaki. We're going to call this person Ekenaki. We're going to call this person P. It starts with P, right? Yeah. Okay. Per, 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 Pernima. <laughs> so P is P. a male or female? P. <laughs> of Sri Lanka was born with unusual birthmarks around her lower ribs and chest. Like a shotgun? I don't know yet. They were unusual though. At a very young age, she began speaking of a past life. After a school trip to a temple about 145 miles away, She insisted that she lived in the town across the river from the temple. Hmm. She said that she was a male incense maker who died in a traffic accident. Okay. Seems legit. Why not? All right. Because cars kill people, but not really. Cars kill people. They want to kill people. (laughs) (laughs) Well, her father went with her brother-in-law to this town and asked around, seeing if, you know, hey, were there any incense makers who were killed in a traffic accident? And it turns out, yes, there was. He died because he was riding on his bicycle and got hit by a bus. I just had an image of, like, a a bug on a window (laughs) pop into my head. You know, I've been watching Brooklyn Nine-Nine, and in one of the episodes, um, one of the that the girls in that show turned around to like in the middle of the street to say, "Hey, good job!" And then she got hit by a bus. It's kind of like Mean Girls. <laughs> yeah, Mean Girls. She got hit by a bus. It's all in picturing. It's never good to be hit by a bus. I'm no, sorry. I'm but very. This is a it's, real it's, person I'm who sorry. got hit by a bus. I'm sorry, I just had this like spot image in my head when you said hit by a bus. We're terrible people. <laughs> Anyways, so they took her to this guy's home to uh, basically try to identify this guy's wife and daughter. And and she was like, yeah, this is so-and-so. It doesn't say their name, so I can't butcher them. Okay. Yeah, this is so-and-so. This was my wife, and this is so-and-so who was my daughter. And she also mentioned the school that he was attending as well. <laughs> Like, I went to this school, and the wife was like, yeah, he sure did. So, they didn't know this other person's family. So, they had no, they they didn't 
know anything about this other person. You know, there's yeah. another example of possible reincarnation. Heather, what would you do <sighs> if some random person mm-hmm. comes over to you to ask you questions with their kid? Uh huh. Who is a reincarnation of your grandma? Okay. Well. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. But what would you do if this person starts giving you, like, real answers about your grandma? Would Would you want to spend more time with this person or would you totally shun them? I wouldn't shun them, but I don't know if I'd necessarily want to spend more time with the person either. It'd be like, all right, cool, you are my grandma. That's interesting. Would it creep you out? Yeah, pretty much. I don't think I would really know what to do. I would be in... Probably too much of amazement. I just, I don't, I don't think I would want to spend the, because I've already said my goodbyes to my grandma. I mean. Yeah. What if it was a family member that you didn't get, not, I'm just saying hypothetically in the future or whatnot. You have someone that you didn't get a chance to say goodbye to, right? Yeah. Pick somebody, anybody. I don't care. They're still here. They're not, whatever. Mm -hmm. But then this person is reincarnated as a kid. And here this like seven, eight year old little kid is talking to you as the person that past that you did not get a chance to say goodbye to that was reincarnated well i mean i would probably maybe say goodbye to the kid because if that kid really does think that they're my whatever yeah whoever that i loved i'd be like you know i loved you when you were this person and i'm glad that you are alive now as this other person go live your life to the fullest young man or woman lady person that's what I would do. I know. It's fun to pick your brain on things. I, uh, I, it's, I, I don't ever really think about that kind of stuff. I like telling the stories, but for it to happen to me, it'd be like, I don't know what I do. just things like this lady that, you know, just talked to this kid about her husband. You know, there's this married woman who had lost her husband. Mm-hmm. It's got to be more than seven years because you have seven-year-old kids talking to him. Yeah. And giving him intimate details about her deceased husband Mm -hmm. what are you gonna do and obviously she didn't get a chance to say goodbye no because he was you know hit by a bus oh yeah i don't know i i guess it depends on the person but making you think stop it i don't i'm gonna get a head cramp (laughs) all right so all of these stories that i've been telling you have been about kids Mm -hmm. who have remembered things But as they grow, they eventually forget. I'm going to tell you a story that is 100% the opposite of that. I'm going to tell you the story about Arthur Flowerdew. Flowerdew. Listeners, Flowerdew. What a name. I know. Hey, quick question. I know this is kind of random. But do you know why we have last names the way we do? Yeah, they were jobs. Yeah. So (laughs) what job was a Flowerdew? They dude flowers. They dude flowers? Yeah, they sprayed the water on the flowers. Okay. <laughs> so whenever, that's what, when you get up in the morning and you're like, oh, it's so dewy out. No, that's not done with, you know, nature. A person comes out there and sprays all your crap. <laughs> Flower dew. <do>. Okay. <laughs> used to be a fairy. He's a fairy. That's what fairies He's probably not a fairy, guys. No. We're, just, we're being random. I'm not here to so. make judgments. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I can't help myself. <laughs> oh yeah. All right. When Arthur was t- <laughs> when Arthur was twelve, he woke up because he was having dreams, very startling dreams. I don't know why they were so startling. He was having dreams about a city surrounded by sand. I don't know why it was so startling, but apparently it was an extremely vivid dream. Like he was actually there Hmm. in this city surrounded by sand. So sand like a desert or sand like sand like a desert. Like it was was a city in the middle of a desert. I was really hoping it was going to be next to a beach. No, no, just desert. Complete desert. So from that day on, the dream was repeated very often, became more and more vivid and he became less and less scared of it. I don't know why you would be scared of it in the first place. It's an unknown space, an unknown area. I guess. Oh, but it became more vivid as time went on. I know that feeling. 
I don't, I forget things often. You know this. I do. I'm terrible. I'm the one that has the vivid random dreams. <laughs> yes, because you're psychic. I'm not psychic. I'm going to bring it up as much as I can. <laughs> She's psychic. Nope. All right, there was a small temple and a volcano-shaped rock on the outskirts of this city that he has been dreaming about. Pompeii? No. You're never going to guess it. <laughs> Probably not. There were streets and lanes and structures. There were some military buildings, some civilian buildings. Arthur was convinced that he was there. He was in that city at one point, even though he lived in England and had never been anywhere else. One day he was on the seashore of England and he was holding some pebbles and the city came up in his mind as he was holding these pebbles. So now he's not just sleep dreaming it. He is daydreaming it. I know that feeling too. I don't. You're so lucky. You know how these people feel. Not (laughs) always. Not always. So now, now every time he went to the beach and held these pebbles, he had the vision of this city. Okay. He grew up, became an old man, but still have these memories of of these dreams, even though, you know, he's he's an old, old man. He kept thinking about the city. Well, one day he was sitting in his apartment and was watching TV and saw a special about a old city that archaeologists were uncovering. Taryn, do you know what old city this was? I told no. you you weren't going to guess it. What is it? Petra. You don't know Petra? No. It's an old city in, in Jordan. Okay. Okay. I really, really love archaeology, so I loved the story. It's fa- it's so great. I almost said fantastic. Oh, you did it. <laughs> At least you've cut back on your shows. Oh, I don't think I have. I <laughs> really don't think I have. So, <laughs> I'm just going to do it on purpose. All right. He, he jumped up after he saw the city of Petra, and he goes, that's it. That's the city. That's what I've been seeing. It's Petra. And he told everybody about it. And eventually, some pretty big people at the BBC got some word that Arthur knows about Petra. So they wanted to do a special on him, which you can still watch. Found a little bit of it on YouTube. I didn't really watch all of it, but I saw it. Okay. So we can watch it. So through this, they, they're they taking him, they're going to be taking him through the city of Petra. And there's this big archaeologist there talking to him about it. And he's taken him through places like he recognizes things that they have excavated. Well, this building was this. This building was this. You haven't dug this thing up yet, but this is going to be this. Creepy. Yeah. Kind of cool, but creepy at the same time. Very, very cool. And they get to this one building. It's like, oh, this is where I worked. I I was part of the military. And he explained this, like, check-in process that was efficient. But, you know, so you could tell who was was there at the time, who wasn't. But And there was this tool that the archaeologists had found. And they were like, well, do you know what this would be used for? And he explained it with ease. Yeah, this was used for this. So he knew everything about this city. Things that hadn't even been excavated yet. I am so geeking out. I love this story so much. It is so great. So there, there's just no... There's nothing to say. He was there. 2,000 year old city. He was there. He says after he went through that city, he remembers... Well, he had this, you know, vision or something of his old past life that while he was working, he was stabbed with a spear. And that's how he died hmm. in the city of Petra. Does he have a birthmark from where the spear was? It doesn't say, but I feel like he should. I feel like he should, too. Ugh. So that is that's Arthur. That's actually really cool. So as you got older, he remembered more. Maybe because the old life was able to reach him. Because it was that old? Maybe. He had a chance to mature. And once he was... one, Maybe he remembered as a kid. Mm -hmm. But it didn't make sense. 
you know. Like, well, he didn't start having the dreams until he was 12, which is the normal time. Well, kids definitely have forgotten things by then. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, I remember having dreams as a kid. I, don't, I can't tell you what they were. There are some that I can, but most of them. I don't remember any. I remember one, but... Only when I was a teenager. We'll talk about that one later. Okay. I I love... Sorry. I really loved that story. I like that one. I think that one and the first one are probably my two favorites. Ugh. That's so cool. I I have so many more stories about reincarnation, but we can go over those We can always do, you know, reincarnations continued. Uh, Part two. Yeah, because I have this really great one that, again... Names that I could never pronounce, but I could try. I like but it. it's a really cool story. I just didn't get into it. So do you want to get into it, or do you want to save it for part two? Oh, we can save it for part two, because, you know, it'll be it'll be my big one, my ender. Okay. It'll be my big ender. Your ender? My ender. Your finisher? My finisher. Thanks. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> Is Cody ever going to come back? Did I scare her off? You didn't scare her off. Oh, good. She's just a busy woman. She was here for, like, three days in a row. <laughs> <laughs> she randomly comes by. I keep, like, I swear, every time we would come home, I was like, oh, Cody's here again. <laughs> I see your truck. And even the kids now know Cody's truck. They're like, what's Cody doing here? I don't That's know. That's awesome. <laughs> no, Cody's a good friend of mine. Uh, we kind of work together. Uh, she works in the building near the area where I work. Across but the I, way. I cover her area without covering... It's confusing. We work in the same general area. We met each other through work, but she's a really good friend. Um, I enjoy having her around, so she's fun to hang out she's with. She's funny. I like her. She's the one that said, you reminded you of me, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, funny story about both Cody and Heather. That's me. Yes. <laughs> so, both these ladies, they're very important to me. They're very good friends, and I am glad that they're a part of my lives. Aww. Both of them are shy. Yeah. Both of them are quiet. Yeah. And they're hard to get to know. Like, you need to be consistent to get these ladies to talk to you. And they both became my friends in the exact same way in a setting as I started talking to them and I never left. As in, every time I see them, I just keep talking to them and now they're both really good friends. But if I wouldn't have gone, hi, Heather, I'm Taryn, or hi, Cody, I'm Taryn, I don't think we would be friends. Because they're both shy. Probably. But that's okay. You guys are great friends. Thanks. And I'm glad I stuck around. Would you ever believe that I'm a shy person? I mean, honestly, during this podcast, these people are hearing me talk more than you. I know. They would think (laughs) that I'm the shy one and that you're the, you know, talkative butterfly that would socialize with everybody. I know. Yet I can almost guarantee when we go out in a crowd, you're going to be the quiet one and I'm going to be the one that doesn't stop talking. More than likely. Boy, if we ever start doing live shows, Taryn, this is not going to go well. It's going to be interesting. I'm going to give you the story and go, here, read this. No, you're just going to be one of these things and you're just going to hide your face in the box. I can't take the boxes on a live show. I should take the boxes on a live show. Just for fun. So they can finally see what I see, like two little eyeballs. Just two eyeballs. <laughs> no, but like I said, some of your some of your best friends come in random ways. And I think both... You and Cody came into my life in random ways, just Aww. by half and chance. But Thanks. I love it. So. I love it, too. Because if I never would have met you, I probably never would have done this. Yeah. So Another it's one. all thanks to Taryn that we have a podcast. It's just because I need a lighter and a warm garage. And now you have me. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> oh, real quick. I want to shout out Brittany, my friend in Georgia. Hi, Brittany. I love you. She was texting me the other day, and I could tell she was listening to the last episode as she was texting me, because she kept, like, putting her little two cents on everything. Hey, maybe it was this. Oh, it couldn't have been this. Maybe this happened, like, as it was going. That's fantastic. Why don't we bring (laughs) Brittany on one of these days? When she's up here, I would love to. So next time she comes up here, Brittany, when are you going to be up here next? Let me know. Text me as you're listening to this, because I know you will. I love you. (laughs) So shout out to Cody. Shout out to Brittany. All right, guys. Our friends. We should all have a... We should bring everyone on. We should. (laughs) We should have the four of us. Oh, Yeah. Me and Brittany over here and you and Cody over there and 
Interesting. Know. That would be a lot of female voices. I don't know if we could handle this. I think we could. All right. I think we have enough different voices. Like, Brittany's high pitch. Brittany sounds a lot like... I don't know. I don't know. We'll she test. does have a higher pitched voice. Well, we'll test it before we do it. Okay. Cody's just quiet. Cody is very sweet. She's very quiet. She's yes. funny. She is. <laughs> Once you get her out of her box, she's very funny. She's great. Does she listen? I don't know. Right. I'll have to ask her. Okay. Cody, text me if you listen. Yeah. We'll be a surprise. Okay. Thank you guys for joining us for the reincarnation episode. I hope that if you were a good person, you get reincarnated as a giant eagle soaring through the sky and, I don't know, into the sunset well, and junk like that. Whatever animal or person you want to be. I want to be a giant eagle. Wait, no, a horse. No, a llama. <laughs> I could see you being a llama. I want to be a llama, a majestic llama who's going to spit in anyone's face she wants. <laughs> I could see you being a llama. I would either want to be a, a dog, but not any kind of dog. It doesn't care. I don't matter what breed, but I want to be the dog of the with the owner that spoils you. Oh, like a, a tiny little chihuahua or no, pavillon or no, something? No, no, no. Like one of a large breed or oh, okay. a large to medium sized breed dog. Okay. That is an inside outside dog mm -hmm. that the family dotes on. Okay. You know, those, like, there was this dog yeah. um, that I used to watch all the time. Mm -hmm. This lady fed this dog three times a day and always had raw hamburger mixed in with her kibble. Oh, dang. And she had certain toys that she got to play with and she was you know, had to go for walks at certain times. Like, this dog was spoiled. Ooh. Like, if I'm going to come back not as a person, let me come back as a spoiled dog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's good. I like that. Yeah. I want to be a llama, though. I do want to spit in anyone's face. And no one can do anything about it because I'm just an animal. <laughs> oh, OK. Last thing. We're going to end right on this. We're not even going to say goodbye. We're going to end on a joke. I've got a joke to tell you, Taryn. Uh-oh. Knock, knock. Who's there? Owls. Owls who? Yes, they do. <laughs> The existence of this 